Hi, I'm Johnny. This is Johnny Likes, the show where I talk about movies that I like. Today, I'm talking about a classic vampire film from the 1980s. Today, Johnny Likes, The Lost Boys. You tell him, Johnny. You tell the world. The plot. A recently divorced mom and her two teenage boys move to a coastal California town with a major vampire problem. What do I like about the movie? The acting. Everyone's performance in this was pitch perfect. Nothing is Oscar worthy, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't praise worthy. For me, the standout performance here is Kiefer Sutherland. He's such a wonderful bad guy, it's almost funny. He exudes pure menace here and is just a pleasure to watch throughout the film. Whenever I think of this movie, I think of him just rasping, You're one of us, Michael! That, that was a great impression, right guys? Michael, you're one of us! You are one of us, Michael! Diane Weiss is underrated in this. She exudes such strong mom energy and pulls it off with such ease. She's just so natural and just kills it. Jason Patrick gives a breakout performance here after being in Solar Warriors the previous year. And this one just screams adolescence and young man. You can almost smell the hormones in his performance. Then again, so does Corey Hames, albeit in a younger and more innocent way. And I thought that they were very believable and great as brothers. I also really enjoyed Corey Feldman and Jameson Newlander as the Frog Brothers. They took just little minor roles and made them into something more that was memorable. And they almost stole the show, but not quite. The costumes. I love the over-the-top look that everyone has. All the kids look like they are rock stars, but from different bands. Just the diversity that the 80s offered in terms of patterns, textures, and fabric. It's wonderful. It's unparalleled. The fashion is just so all over the place. I love it. The sets. The midway looked and felt so real. It was great. Grandpa's house. Mom, Mom are you gonna help me? Soon! Mom. Hey guys, no running in the house! The vampire lair. Not bad, huh? the carnival. These are all these great, wonderful open spaces that are decorated with great attention to little details, such as the Doors poster in the Vampire Lair, which is a nod to the opening credits song. I love seeing teens' rooms in movies. The choices that the production designer makes to fill these characters' most personal spaces with. What posters do they have on the wall? What bands do they like? That sort of thing just gives me all the more insight to the character and just makes it a little more richly painted for me. The tone. This film has several. It's gothic and lighthearted. It's funny and serious. It's surreal and down to earth. The balancing of these different tones is one of the film's hidden assets. And I think that it helps it to transcend the 1980s time period where it is otherwise so firmly planted. Several scenes and little moments. My favorite scene in the movie is where Michael is being initiated into the gang and they are all hanging under a bridge and a train goes overhead and one by one they drop into the unreasonably thick fog. It's nightmarish, it's original, and I'm sure there's got to be more symbolism involved than simply just being able to let go. Michael glued to the ceiling and almost flying out the window when he wakes up. The vampires sleeping upside down like actual bats with their ugly feet in the cave. The dog Nanook, sensing danger in Michael and trying to protect Sam. The opening credits with the Doors song showing the personalities of Santa Cruz. I don't know what the song's called, but the, the Thou Shalt Not Fall kind of theme song that plays throughout the film. I love it. It is very catchy. It might get stuck in your head. It gets stuck in mine. Uh, Jason Patrick wanting to fight Kiefer Sutherland and going, Just you! Just you! 
Just you. Come on. Just you. Love that. So macho. Grandpa interrupting Sam and Michael carrying Star up the stairs to ask if they filled the car up with gas after taking it without asking. You know the rule about filling up the car with gas when you take it without asking? No, Grandpa. The movie also has some great cinematography, and I just love the whole general vibe that it gives off. So what do I not like about it? The Michael and Star love story? Never been a fan of that. Not my thing. The new kids coming to town and trying to find their place, make friends, find out where they are in the new social hierarchy, all the artificial posturing and pecking order that goes along with that. Not for me. The look of the vampires. I think they look cheesy and dated now. Contact lenses and fake teeth are about the extent of the vampire transformation for this film. And although I do appreciate the minimalist approach to the vampire look, every time I see it, I just think that it looks like actors in makeup. And it brings me a little bit out of the moment. And because of this, they never really feel threatening to me. And vampires are supposed to be a little bit scary. Some of the 80s cheese. I'm looking at you, Tim Capello. I know I said earlier I like the costumes and the whole 80s look. I flip-flop a little bit on some of the 80s elements though. Sometimes I absolutely love everything. Sometimes I find some stuff to be just a little bit much. They could have went for maybe a little bit more timeless of a look. Like, did they really think mullets would be here in 40 years? Oops. Apparently mullets are back. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know. Are they? Are they really? Can you guys believe that? I thought they were dead for good. The head vampire logic. So wouldn't you have to kill the original vampire? Does that make Max the first vampire ever? I like this idea, but logically it just doesn't work for me. How far up the food chain would he have to go? Where does it begin? This picks at my brain a little bit. I like the idea though. Final thoughts and rating. The Lost Boys is one of my favorite vampire films of all time. I've seen it a million, maybe two million times since I was 10, 11, 12. I don't know when I first saw it. Somewhere around that age though. And honestly, it is pretty dated now. But if you can get by the whole 80s-ness of it, it is still a wonderful, big-budget Hollywood vampire film. Despite the datedness of it, I think that overall it has aged quite well. I still find it incredibly enjoyable and fun to watch, even after all these years and all these viewings. And I'm going to rate it 4 and a quarter out of 5. So what do you guys think of The Lost Boys? What do you want to see me talk about next? Leave your thoughts in the comments. And if you could do me one more little thing and do a little bit of clicky clicky, you know, the, the likey subscribey thing, that would be just magnificent. It is, after all, quick, free, and relatively painless. Plus, it helps me out. Thanks for watching me talk about movies for a little while, and you can tune in next time to see what else Johnny likes.